Congress, I'm particularly pleased to welcome our next keynote speaker, um, Christy Watson. Many of you may be aware of Christy already. Um, she is a nurse. Um, she has worked in various hospitals in London and elsewhere. And um, she is a well-known author whose first book won the Costa Prize for the first novel, and her second novel had great acclaim. She has now published a book about her experience as a nurse, and, and we've been really privileged to have seen early copies of that as it was developing. Um, many of you will be aware of this book because it has received amazing acclaim across all the media, and um, lots of excerpts have been used by other people as it's been Radio 4 Book of the Week. The significance for us is it is truly telling our story, the story of our lives. And many of you will recognize it, and you will identify with some of the experiences um, if you read the book, and certainly when you hear Christy. Christy is a great friend of the RCN. Um, we have had contact with her over the years in her work teaching creative writing, um, and she actually launched the book at Cavendish Square. So it's with great pleasure that I'm able to introduce you to Christy today. Thank you. Thank you so much. One of the questions that's come up in Congress has been how we get the media to reflect and promote nursing. I've been thinking a lot about that, both in my 20 years experience as a nurse, but also as a writer. And when I first had the idea to write The Language of Kindness, I went to the libraries to see what was out there, because I realized that nurses didn't have much of a media platform. There weren't nurses on television, or on radio shows, or with columns in the way that there are doctors. So I was hoping to find a lot of nursing books that weren't academic in the library. And I scoured the shelves looking for narrative nonfiction that was already existing. And I found a whole genre of books written by and celebrating medicine. And I didn't find a single one about nursing. Actually, that's not true. They had a copy of Florence Nightingale's Notes on Nursing. <laughs> I was so shocked. How could this be? How had I never thought about it, being a nurse and writer? How, what does that say about our valuing nursing? What does it say about our values of society and humanity? And so I felt compelled to write the book, because I think that nursing is the most important job in the world. And I think that nursing matters now more than ever before. But I didn't always want to be a nurse. I wasn't a born nurse, like I'm sure many of you were. I wanted to be a marine biologist for a while, because I imagined wearing a swimsuit and flip-flops and swimming with dolphins and living somewhere like California or maybe Barbados. These were the things that went through my head. I went through as many career ideas as you could possibly imagine. Law, singer, scientist, jazz trumpeter, astronomer, farmer. I went to agricultural college for two weeks, actually. <laughs> I even had my exasperated parents buy me some specialist farming equipment because I said this was it. I would be a farmer. Again, I romanticized farming. I imagined sitting in a field in the late summer sunshine, eating cheese and pickle sandwiches. <laughs> and farming was quite different from that. <laughs> so I didn't want to be a nurse, but I didn't know what to do. So I volunteered when I was 16 as a way to have some time to think about what I wanted to do. And nursing really didn't enter my brain because, again, then, as, it, as now, it wasn't really portrayed in the media, it was completely underrepresented. But for the first time, when I was working with adults who had physical and learning disabilities, I was around nurses. And I was astonished by what they were doing. I found myself watching them all the time and being in total awe of them. They suggested that I might consider nursing as a career, 
And at that time, they offered a bursary, without which I wouldn't be standing here. And so I thought, why not? I'll give it a go. Maybe I'll be suited to this. It's a very varied career. I'll never be bored. And I thought maybe I had the stomach for it. But when I told my family, my dad laughed out loud. He couldn't imagine me dedicated to caring for others. And when I started during the first week, I had an occupational health blood test. I saw the sight of my own blood and I fainted. <laughs> <laughs> and the phlebotomist said, I think you should rethink this career choice. But I'm really, really glad I didn't. I wasn't a born nurse. Both tragedy and joy built me as a nurse, though I didn't know it back then. I loved the job straight away. I loved the busyness of it, the structure. I loved being around older nurses who had seen everything and then some. I loved the idea of listening to patients, working out the puzzle of their lives and understanding that hospitalization and illness is just one small piece of a patient's jigsaw puzzle. I loved the fact that nursing was so varied. And I worked for many years in pediatric intensive care, and then I went on to be a resuscitation nurse. I didn't really think too much about the philosophy of nursing, though. It was just something I did. I didn't think about the thing that prompted me to go to the library or that prompted Florence Nightingale to try to get into language what nursing was, what it meant, until I was on the other side of the fence. And then six years ago, my dad was dying too quickly, too young. He was only 63 from lung cancer. And I found myself a relative, not a nurse. And when all had failed, when my dad's chemotherapy, his palliative radiotherapy had stopped working, and when his team of doctors left the room, along with any hope that we had that my dad might survive, it was his nurse, Cheryl, by his bedside, who offered my dad and our whole family something else, something that is the most important thing. She gave him dignity. What a gift. Peace and love. I watched Cheryl like a hawk, how in the smallest of actions she made the biggest difference to all of us. She had advanced technical skills, and she was a nurse prescriber, and it was those skills balanced with her experience that allowed her to close the curtains just at the right time so that my dad could bear the light. It was her experience that allowed her to judge his pain, their relationship, how she knew him so well, how she built that piece of a jigsaw puzzle of his whole life. I remember standing outside the bedroom because she ushered me out. She treated me as a daughter, not as a nurse, which is exactly right. She ushered me out, and I heard my dad shuffling with the sheets. And then I heard him shout, jump in, Cheryl. And, <laughs> and I heard her laugh, shriek with laughter, cheeky beggar, she said. Their relationship was something to witness. She helped my dad be my dad until the very end. He died with dignity and with humor and with peace, thanks to excellent nursing care a death that every single one of us deserves. <laughs> Nurses give and will always give and have always given so much of themselves indiscriminately to strangers, whether they're a man like my dad dying from cancer at home, or a child with learning disabilities in hospital who suffered in a fire, or even the President of America. Nurses have always done so, and we will always do so. What an astonishing thing that we do that. What an astonishing job. I suddenly realized, where, where are the nurses' voices talking about that? Why are we hearing about nursing from the outside in, not from the inside out? Nursing is the most undervalued of all the professions. If how we treat our most vulnerable members is a measure of our society, then the act of nursing itself and how we treat our nurses 
is a measure of our humanity. <laughs> Nursing is in big trouble. And this is a cross-party issue. This is bigger than we can imagine, and it's global. More nurses are leaving the NHS than are joining. We know that. But this isn't just an NHS issue. In America, by 2022, they will be one million nurses short. That's the biggest nursing shortage they've ever seen. I'm losing sleep about this, but frankly, we should all be losing sleep about this. Our population is getting older at a rate unimaginable, and people have such complex needs. The world has changed, and we're yet to catch up. So I wanted to write something about nursing, but it's so hard to get into language what it is we do, how important it is. It was my patients who were helping me to understand. I went back to work too soon after my dad died, before his funeral even, because I said to my manager, if I don't go back now, I'll likely never go back. I was working as a resuscitation nurse in a London hospital. Inevitably, the first crash call I had that day was to the oncology wards. I took a deep breath and I ran through the ward with everybody looking just like my dad. The same Marks and Spencer's pyjamas, the same untouched fruit on the bedside table, the same wife who was smiling too brightly next to the bed. I ran into the side room and it turned out to be a false alarm, but the patient pulled his oxygen mask down when the team left and asked me to stay and read him the racing results from a newspaper. <laughs> I was already late and my manager had already commented that I moved in quite mysterious ways, but I decided to prioritize it. I stayed a while, sat down next to him, and I read his results. And I remember the smell of metal from the chemotherapy through his skin and the whir of his drip. And I saw his slippers underneath his bed and they were the exact slippers that my dad had. And I burst into tears and I cried so violently that I knocked over a glass of water next to his bed. And I kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It should be me helping you. And he said, nonsense, we, we should all be helping each other. And he pulled me towards him and I leant against his chest. His ribs were like a xylophone. And I cried and I cried. And I remember wishing so hard that this man, this stranger, who was dying of cancer, was my dad. He taught me something else. He taught me that nursing is fluid and it's universal. Unlike neurosurgery, which we might never come into contact with, each and every one of us will be nursed at some stage in our lives, even nurses, all of us. And if we're lucky enough, we'll get to nurse a loved one. When I started out as a junior nurse, I thought nursing was about technology and saving lives and cure at all cost. But nursing is about something deeper and older and much more important than that. Nursing is less chemistry and biology, physics, maths, anatomy, and pharmacology than I thought, although, of course, those things are very important. Nursing is literature, it's philosophy, it's poetry, and nursing is politics. Nursing is so hard to get into language because it's not one thing or another thing. Nursing is everything. Nursing is who we're meant to be and why we are here. I feel that strongly about it. It predates history books, although some of the earliest texts written about nursing describe nurses. There was one in the first century BC in India as sympathetic. In the history of Islam, the first nurse was described as a good nurse, an ideal, because she was compassionate and empathetic. Sympathy, compassion, empathy. I often get asked if anyone could be a nurse. What a stupid question. <laughs> I'm sure neurosurgeons, not that I've got anything against neurosurgeons, don't get asked, can anyone be a neurosurgeon? Of course not everyone can be a nurse. But I think that to be a great nurse, you are born with sympathy, compassion, and empathy, because the technical skills we can learn. <laughs> and
And sympathy, compassion, and empathy are the things that fall away first when nurses do not have time to care. <laughs> Nursing is saying to people during their darkest hours, I am with you. It's giving a chunk of your soul to somebody else. Later that day, I met Betty. Betty was on a on, in a corridor on a trolley, alone. She was elderly, she was frail. She'd come into hospital hypothermic and with chest pain of no physical origin. It turned out her husband of a lifetime, Stan, had died in the hospital of a heart attack some weeks before. I sat with Betty for a while. I found her a sandwich and a cup of tea. I found her a bear hugger machine which warmed her up with white billowing fabric over her. And I held her hand. She told me stories about Stan, how they danced, how her wedding dress was made from parachute silk, which was like the material over her. She kept repeating, how time flies. I didn't do anything technical for her, but she said that I had saved her life. Of course, I'd done no such thing. I'd simply held her hand. But my goodness, what a privilege to hold the hand of a person at the frailest, most extreme and significant moments of life. To be a nurse. <laughs> After a while, it was impossible to tell where Betty's hand ended and my hand began and nursing exists in that space. The, pet, the NHS and other hospitals are full of patients just like Betty. We might all be Betty one day. Nursing really helped her. In fact, good nursing care is the only thing that could help Betty. I'm so grateful that I had time that day to sit and hold her hand because there are many other days when I did not have time. Like so many of our patients now, she didn't suffer with curable, treatable diseases. We've been living with a medical model of care for a long time, but our patient population has changed beyond belief. Our human condition has changed. We're suffering in old age and we're lonely. Our patients come in with physical and mental and emotional illnesses, a tangled ball of complex needs. They might have unmet social care needs at home, a spouse with dementia who now needs looking after, be suffering with poverty, loneliness, fear. Discharge planning nurses save more lives, I would imagine, than neurosurgeons. We laugh, but it's true. And I think it's about time we started shouting about that and celebrating that. I have really nothing against neurosurgeons. I do like them. They're a nice bunch. <laughs> but what a thing to imagine that discharge planning nurses are saving lives because our patient population has changed so much. We need to catch up. We're living in a time of isolationism, division, and even hate. And nursing cannot cure us. But here's the thing. Nursing doesn't seek to cure. Betty was right. Nursing can save lives. Nursing saves us. Sympathy, compassion, and empathy should be revered and elevated, and professionalism and technical skills of nursing should be respected. Nursing, I believe, is a faith. Nursing is a faith in humanity and tolerance and respect for every single human being, regardless.
Nursing reminds us of the only things that will matter to all of us in the end. And nursing reminds us that even when we are most frail and vulnerable and alone, we are not alone at all. I cannot think of a more important job. I, I plan to shout very, very loudly with the language of kindness about the importance of nursing. And I hope that you can all shout with me. Thank you very much. I might cry now. <laughs> Thank I you. have some tissues. <laughs> Christy, I, I, as Chair of Congress, I'd like to thank you for articulating to us without boundaries and reminding us of just what we are and what we do. And, and thank you for filling that gap and giving us those words. A, a round of applause again, please. It's nice to have one of our own at home, so thank you. You've kindly offered to take some questions. Yeah. And we're a big hall, and I'm sure lots of you have many questions, so we'll try and do it as orderly and as fairly as possible. We have two roving microphones, but if I can, I'd like to bring people to the procedural mic. So, Desi, is there someone at number four? If you'd raise your hand, and I'll see if we can... I have number three up in the top corner, if you can say your name. No, 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 I'm, I'm... Oh, you're just telling us you've got the microphone. Here, so there we are, Desi, number four. If you could just say your name, please. Uh, my name's Jamina. I am a, a voting member for the North West Inner London branch. Um, I'd just like to say thank you so much for coming over and articulating so well what it is that encompasses a, what makes a nurse a nurse. Um, I have a feeling that nurses are extremely humble. Everything that you said that nurses are sympathetic, compassionate, that's what makes us so humble and so quiet about what we do. How could you, what would you, what would you advise us all as nurses to help us to speak up about what we do and get out there and, and help the media to change their opinions of us and, I don't even know how to, how to put it. Again, I'm quite nervous and humble. <laughs> <laughs> but how would you inspire us and encourage us to, to speak up more about what we do and get the word out there that we want the best for our patients? So what, would, what would their advice be to us to help us get our message out there differently? Does that make sense? Excellent. I'm glad because I was a bit mumbly there myself. <laughs> and another question? Is there anyone else? Uh, yep. Here we go. Oh, I'm being whistled. I thought that was just because you liked my suit. On you go, number four first. Um, it's not really a question. It's just to say that you are a total and utter inspiration to nursing. <laughs> We have student nurses in this hall that will be reflecting on what you say, which will help them through their careers. I wish there had been somebody like you when I started my training. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Microphone number five, if you could say your name. Can you say your name, please? Oh, yes. I'm Catherine Gamble, a professional lead for mental health. Thank you very much. I wanted to uh, just ask you and to reflect on the fact that how writing is so powerful. I actually have one book that made the difference for me, which was Monica Dickens' One Pair of Feet, which was full of laughter and full of a appraisal of what a general nurse was all about. I'm just thinking for all of us across our branches, what ideas have you got to how we maintain our resilience? Okay. 
So we have two questions at the moment, which are, how can we, how can we change? What could we do to change um, the, the public or the media's opinions of us? And Catherine's question, which was, in essence, how to maintain our resilience. How do we maintain our resilience? Yeah. Um, thank you very much. I've got my tissues here. <laughs> I'm really struggling. I, I agree with you completely. I think that we are what goes with sympathy, compassion, and, and, and empathy is a kind of quiet voice. And I think that we've got to the stage now where we need to shout. I think that nursing is in such crisis that on behalf of patients around the world, we have a responsibility to be advocates for them and to really fight against our humbleness and I think that we need to be individually and collectively raising our voices to say this is the most important job in the world. And I don't think it's arrogance. I think that people don't know from the outside. They don't hear. They get one perception from the media. It's usually of bad nursing care. And of course, bad nursing care should never, ever exist. And we need to hear about it. But it's one story. And the vast majority of nurses I've ever worked with have been excellent, providing excellent nursing care. And that's the narrative that we all need to shout about. And Daisy, have you got? There was another question. What oh, was the resilience? The resilience. Um, I think that it's very important for people to realize that nursing is dangerous. We look after patients with infections and we risk infections. We look after patients who are suffering and we swallow some of that trauma day by day by day. And over years, that can be very dangerous. So I think it's about acknowledging that nursing can give you symptoms of depression, post-traumatic stress symptoms, and offering nurses support equal to the support that doctors now get. They get time off, they go for therapy, there are lots of 24-hour uh, helplines for doctors, rightly so, who are suffering with mental health problems related to the job. And there is yet to be that equivalency for nurses, and I'll be campaigning very hard for that. I'm going to go to microphone number four, and my, then microphone number six. Hi, uh, Mike Travers from Liverpool. I've been coming to Congress for 36 years, and for the description of what nurses do and what we are, that was the best. And I'm, I'm <laughs> going to The comments I want to make and the question I want to ask is this, is that I'm a children's nurse in Liverpool, and recently we've been through a really traumatic time, and it's changed the NHS. I don't think people realise yet how much it's changed the NHS. And I work with some fabulous nurses, a lot of fabulous nurses in my trust, and I'd love you to come up and meet them sometime. But the thing is, for me, is that your booth will have an impact on nurses. I think what we've been through, your booth will have an impact on the wider public to help them understand just what we do for them and that the, the bad press that nurses have got in recent events of what happened in Liverpool is not warranted because we care for our patients, all our patients really, really well. We're there at the start of life, we're there at the end of life and I don't think people take that into account. So congratulations on this and I'll certainly be using your book to help my colleagues through a very difficult time in my trust. Thanks, Thanks mate. Thank you for number six. Thank you. Uh, Mary Hutchinson, thank you very, very much for your really articulate knitting together of your nursing experience and your writerly skills. It was magical. I just want to add a tiny little anecdote that it happened for me a few years ago when my goddaughter won a, a scholarship to an Ivy League 
um, American University, and in the book they've sent, they used the word alumnus, alumni. And she said, what does that mean? I said, well, generally a graduate. But we looked it up in the Oxford English Dictionary, and to my amazement, it does mean that, of course, but its origin is mid-17th century from the Latin, and in my copy it said nurse. Here on my phone it says nursling. But it comes from alere, to nourish. And I was just so bowled over because I thought the heart of nursing, there is that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the top sections that wishes to ask a question so that I can send a microphone up there? Or ask you to come down lower? I'm not seeing anyone at the moment. Number three. OK. Um, Ghazala Akhtar, London Region. My question to you is, do you feel that nurses, we, are, we do not celebrate each other enough and we do not um, appreciate each other enough? You know, we're good at criticising each other, but we're not there to sort of say, hello, you've done a very good job today. You know, we don't feel as though... We don't appreciate each other enough. How do you think we can overcome that? Yes, patients say to us that, yes, you know, this nurse was very good. I pre but as, as colleagues, we don't tell each other, you know, you've done a good job today. Are you OK? You know, you had a little bit of a traumatic experience. Um, let's talk about it. Can do you know what I'm saying? That we're, we're not supportive of our colleagues. We're quick to criticise, but we're not there to say, encourage them and say, you've done a good job. OK. And I think we need to celebrate the good work that all the nurses do, and, and, and we need to blow our own trumpet. I think that's what I'm saying. We need to blow our own trumpet a bit more and say, look. Well, you've convinced yourself, and I think you're right. I think we should <laughs> blow our own trumpet. So <laughs> thank you. Trumpet. And I don't think that we do I'm it gonna move. I'm going to move on, OK? But and thank I congratulate you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I, didn't, I, I think you've convinced yourself, and I think we're all right. We're, we're definitely going to have to get better at that, blowing our own trumpet. Can, I'm looking for some more microphones. Number four at the back, can you say who you are, please? Uh, um, can, excuse me, excuse, can a um, uh, microphone at the back? Thank you. Uh, Laura Johnson, South Yorkshire. Um, uh, firstly, can I say, marine biology was my first degree. <gasps> it's, <laughs> it, it's not um, swimming with dolphins. <laughs> I know. <laughs> really. I bet you're glad it's you've come now. It's really cold. <laughs> Uh, Yorkshire coast at six o'clock in the morning. Studying plankton. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> um, I was inspired by my mum, who uh, trained as a nurse in her late thirties. I've done the same. Who inspired you along your way? I think it was those very early nurses that I watched when I was sixteen, because I hadn't really heard about nursing before or only in a negative way. But actually, my mum is still a practising social worker. And so I think, subconsciously, I was always taught the language of kindness from her. Yeah. That's a lovely answer, thank you. Number... <laughs> Number six. Uh, Philip McCaffrey, voting member of Charter from the Vale. Your contribution was very impressive, and I do warmly congratulate you. I think we will all take a great a lot away from our meeting today. But could you just perhaps guide us as to how, particularly universities and education departments, how they instill compassion, sympathy, and empathy in their curriculum in order to equip the students with the qualities which you demonstrate your aspirations for? Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. It's a good question. Um, I think that. It's about two different things, really. One is politically from the outside, allowing nurses the time to demonstrate those skills that I believe that a nurse or a great nurse is born with. But I also think there's a huge part in teamwork, in role modeling, and in having somebody senior <coughs> to be a mentor and act in a way that young nurses will emulate, because these behaviors can increase over time. 
um, if you have the right role models in place. And that's why I really, really hope that the bursary gets reinstated tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Because the people that we want to come in are the people that are dropping off unable to, and they're the people with the life experience that, that exhibits those, those core values that we want at the heart of nursing. Thank you. Number four. Hi, yeah, my name's um, Laura Zolford, and I'm the um, chair of the Trade Union Committee. Um, my mum was widowed when I was five years old, and there was a good friend of hers who nursed her when she first found out she was diabetes. She was a member of the RCN. She was one of our um, local presidents of our branch. And she said to my mum, she said, Marge, she said, send the girls off to, uh, she said, send the girls off to St. John. She said, it'll be brilliant for them. She said, give mum, my mum some rest time. And so we, all my sisters and myself, we went off to St. John's Ambulance and that's how we learned. And we learned from people who were willing to share their skills. And we all ended up going to, both of us, two, two of us are nurses, one's a social worker. And listening to your, um, you know, your, uh, the, the talk you've just given about sort of the language of kindness, it was through people like that that taught us how to be kind. And we went into the job and, I think in these days there's such bad, there's been such bad press and it's not the most attractive, you know, in terms of conditions and the conditions we're working in with shortage of staff. There's, um, it's not most, probably the most attractive. How do you think you can with the, because the way you've articulated what nursing is, it's just been amazing. I agree with Mike, you know, in 42 years of nursing, it's most probably been the best description I've ever heard of what nursing is. I, how do you think you can go into help us, you know, with the RCN to go into schools and try and make people, you know, girls and boys, uh, to come into nursing and make it that attractive profession? Because everything you've said is what we felt. Most of us going off duty, we have that in our heart. We know, we feel that pain, we feel that emotion. How do you think, with your skills, because you have got amazing skills to be able to articulate that? Because I don't think anybody else ever has. How do you think you can now use those skills to go into schools and try and get more people? Because, you know, that, that wave of shortage is coming over the hillside. And yeah. it would be great if you could do that to get more people into the job. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. And question number six. I think that's the last one we'll have time for. My name is Patricia. You done? Southwest Inna. Um, Christy, well done. Um, telling us about what you've been doing to the patient, holding their hands, going close to them, is very amazing. But with the nature of our work, you don't even have time. You, you love to sit by your patient's bedside just to hold their hands and talk to them, especially even during the last office hours, but you don't have that time mm. because they believe in paperwork. And what are you going to do to change the, I mean, like, what is going on right now with us? It's, it's a big question. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think they're the same question, actually. Or they come from the same place. Because I think nursing can not only help other nurses and patients, but I think nursing can teach the wider society something that is really important about our loss of values that we have as human beings, it seems, across the whole of the Western world. We're, we're living in a time where nurses are receiving death threats, um, and that says so much about our society, who is, who's making money from that. We're worshipping the cult of youth, external beauty, money, power, all these things instead of the things that are core and central to nurses. And this has an impact on political value of nursing, so therefore you end up with less time because there's less money, but it also has an impact on young people wanting to go into nursing in the first place. I got asked recently um, by a journalist if it would help nursing if Kim Kardashian became a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was yes, sadly. <laughs> I think it really would. Um, 
But what we have to do, and these are all part of the same question and the same answer, is we have to tell people about nursing and we have to shout about the fact that it is the most important job in the world. And the more that we do that collectively and individually, and the more that we value our, our own job and what we do and our colleagues and our teamwork, the better that will be. In terms of schools, I think it's a brilliant idea, but I think an even better idea is for children who are growing up to see widespread media and libraries filled with books that are written by nurses from the inside looking out. I think that will have a huge impact on children particularly. I think that that's a perfect place for us to, to, to end our question session. I am aware that some people didn't. I'm sorry. What are you? Well, well, can we wait? We can do that and for, I'll, I'll have a chat. I would rather wait. We, we've had a, a lovely question and answer session. Your speech has been beautifully compelling. Um, I might not have 40 years of coming to Congress, but it is now over 20. And, you know, when I think of some of the people who've come to speak to us here and the value that they bring, I can't think of anyone who's come and spoke at that lectern and actually brought the same value and sense of worth to this college. I include, I, include, I include our, our peers and politicians in that, so thank you for, for bringing that to us. Um, colleagues, Christy will be doing a, a book signing. There's some books for sale up in the exhibition. I want to just hold that, asp that inspiration that we've had in the room and go off to lunch with, you know, and for those who know me, I'm not the most uh, fluffy around the edges. Um, but I think with that joy and that compassion in our hearts and, and have an amazing lunch cause, can I have a round of applause once more for Christine? Thank you. Thank you.